This place is massive for, you know, for a place outside that looks small. Was that New Evelyn? I just saw his hair. Yeah. No, I haven't that. Uh, <laughs> what's, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> what? Why does this feel awkward right now? Hey, traveler. Maybe we should strike up a conversation with the person next to us. Isn't that... They're sitting together and the rest of the place is practically empty still. It's kind of awkward if we don't say anything. Isn't... Isn't that your usual job? Uh, you little... <laughs> of course you put this on Paimon! Excuse me, I did not realize you felt awkward. I am terribly sorry. God damn his voice. <laughs> wow. Nuevo Let, hello. I would be perfectly happy to chat with you if that is what you would like. Oh! Uh, of course you would hear Paimon so speak, because we're literally guess. the only person <laughs> in the opera. So quiet, it's Paimon. echoing. You can never keep your voice down, Paimon. I'm sorry. Uh, wait, that's not it, Paimon. Sorry. Um, Paimon's the one who was being rude. Talking this is so awkward. Like uh, so very embarrassing. Think, but, uh, what should we talk about? This is getting even more awkward. Uh, oh, Paimon's got it. You're also here early and sitting in the front. Are you a friend of Linny's too? Hey friend you say well if mr linney would like to be my friend i would be more than happy to reciprocate oh oh so you're not friends with linney then oh look at him is this how he sits no way if you actually have this character and he sits like this god what is, what what nice to meet you paimon is paimon and this is the traveler we just arrived in vaudane it is an honor to meet you two i have heard of your deeds across to that of course. And as required by proper etiquette, I will also introduce myself. I am... Nuevelet. Oh, Monsieur Nervillet. What an honor Nuevelet. to have you here to see my show. Ah, Mr. Linney. I should say it is in fact an honor for me to see your performance in person. Uh, wait. Nervillet? Could he be... Hmm? I saw you all chatting just now, but it seems you still don't know who Monsieur Nervillet is. Nervillet. Allow me to introduce you to Fontaine's Chief Justice. That seat is always reserved for him. It wouldn't be too much to say that he's the symbol of justice and honesty here in Fontaine. Whoa! Uh, sorry for being so rude just now. Paimon had no idea you were such an important person. No offense taken. Being Chief Justice is merely what I do for work. Nearly every person has their usual reserved seat, so I'm not so special, really. And by the way, I should probably let you know, even though I would prefer not to, there's someone sitting up there in the VIP seats that has been striking a pose for quite a while now. Why is she here? Of course, I mean, yeah, why, why not she? Why, why won't he, huh? Why wouldn't she be here? I believe she is trying to give you a most elegant and impressive first impression. So I think you should take notice of her sooner rather than later. Otherwise, she may become... Flustered. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> huh? Oh, it's Farina, the Hydro Archon. Huh. She sure has a smug and satisfied look on her face. Guess she has no idea that you saw right through her act. Very good. That is for the best. No need to pay her any more attention. We may now enjoy the show. Huh? So is this what things are like between the Chief Justice and the Hydro Archon? What is going on? What? All right. Please wait just a moment longer. I've pretty much finished my preparations, and the performance will start as soon as the audience has made their way to their seats. It's more like the Chief Justice, the higher up than the Hydro Archon at this point. Yay! The show's finally about to start! A VIP seat for the Hydro Archon? That's ridiculous. <laughs> Crowns into the venue and the curtains open for the show to begin. This is a cutscene. Oh, they're 
Never mind. The show must be starting. Hmm. Oh, sorry, Paimon will try to stay quiet. <laughs> Please, Paimon. Welcome, one and all, to the Opera Epicles. I am the star of today's show, Linny. And over here is my sister, Lynette, who will be working as my wonderful assistant. Please, let's give her a warm welcome. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I know she may seem to be a little sleepy right now, but that's just a sign that she's nervous. Whatever. <laughs> now, some of you may be thinking, two vision holders who can freely manipulate elemental powers performing magic is not true magic at all. So, I would like to take a moment to assure you that elemental powers will have nothing to do with what you will witness on the stage today. Hmm. I got a mask guy. and myself have removed our visions for the show. That way, even the gods won't be able to help us. Oh, good point. That's what makes the show real magic. Now, without further ado, let the show begin. Lynette will now exit the stage to make some preparations. Let the show begin is aligned with what Barbara said. Really? Is that right, right? I know you might That's Barbara's her, line when she does worry. a burst. She'll be coming Let the right show back begin. on stage momentarily. Or it's Perhaps her in an elemental skill. I don't know. I'm sure she'll be stealing the spotlight soon enough. Oh, and before I forget, there's one more thing I should say. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. Well, a magician's greatest skill. Oh, cutscene. Things disappear or appear. The possibilities are endless. Why is it so loud? <sighs> hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just gonna act surprised because I don't know. <laughs> but this isn't what you came for. These little tricks, you've seen them all before. Yes. So it's time for something truly extraordinary, don't you think? This one's a little tricky. Wait, what? Using this water tank, I shall make my sister vanish completely, right before your very eyes. This is going to be interesting. It's actually quite simple. She'll just turn into air bubbles and float right out of the top. What do you mean? Float out of the top. Oh no. I told them to check all the props carefully. With the lid on, even air can't escape. An amateur magician would be getting very nervous right around now. <laughs> Luckily, it's me on stage, so let me show you what a true virtuoso can do. What the hell? What is going on? Lynette, are you still there? Don't go too far. We don't want to use up all our magic. Hi, I'm back. Uh-huh. Wow. <laughs> we got to hurt, bro. Wow, that was actually pretty interesting. It's like something would happen, but Never mind. No wonder he's a famous magician. If we could see easily through his tricks, 
then that would mean that his skills are still lacking. To appreciate magic, you should focus on the show happening on stage, rather than getting caught up in trying to see that which has been intentionally hidden. Ah, guess you're right. Paimon couldn't believe her eyes when Lynette reappeared. Amazing! Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'm glad you enjoyed that performance. But our magical journey has only just begun. I've prepared even more astonishing surprises for everyone here. Really? The magic of transformation and disappearance can go far beyond what you've just seen. That's a cat, wow. I'm sure many of you are thinking that escaping the water tank was impressive enough. But Lynette is still my assistant after all. In which case, I have ample time to make all necessary preparations. So, for my next trick, I will require the participation of one lucky audience member. Please, oh? if my assistants could bring out the magical boxes now. There are two boxes, and only two boxes. One is here, and one is there in the aisle among the audience. I'm sure many of our clever audience members have already guessed our next magic trick. <laughs> A swap! Our lucky audience member and I will each enter a magic box. After one minute, we will each emerge from the opposite box. Now please, everyone pay very close attention to the box you see here. Don't give me any chance to make a move. Wow! How's he gonna do this? Hey, do you think this is all magic tricks, or does Lenny have actual superpowers? Let's watch and see. The lucky audience member will be generated by this random number selector. It selects numbers entirely at random. Even I don't know who will be chosen to participate. Now then, let's begin. Oh, let me see. Oh, row seven, seat three. Congratulations! You now have the chance to experience magic firsthand for an entire minute. Please, come forward. My assistant will take you beside the magic box. I'm sorry, it might be a little crazy That's inside, pretty interesting. but no need to feel nervous. We've carefully arranged everything for you to be as comfortable as possible. You don't need to do anything, but no matter what strange things may happen, don't come out of the box. If the magic is interrupted, who knows where you might end up? You might even find yourself in the Fortress of Meripede. Oh, okay. All right. Before I enter the magic box, <laughs> there is one more thing I need to ask the audience to do. Could you all give me a countdown? Like this. 60, 59, 58. Just keep counting down. You can go a little faster or slower if you like. I won't be able to see anything in the pitch black box, so I'll be relying on your voices to know when time is up. Oh, and no tricks now. If you quickly count from 60 in just 30 seconds, then I'll be in a tough spot. Ooh, Paimon kind of wants to count faster after hearing him say that. <laughs> I'm sure Lana is prepared with the whole crowd counting together. You couldn't even... You couldn't even if you wanted to. No, no, that won't do. I can see it in your eyes. You still can't be trusted. Let's practice together. Come on, repeat after me. 60, 59, 58. 60, 59, 58! That's right, perfect. Keep it going. All right, I'll see you all on the other side once you've finished counting. 54, 53, 52? Why aren't you counting, Nervalet? I am counting in my head. I think things are exciting enough in here as it is. <laughs> Merely a consequence of my identity and personality. Do not worry about me. Just enjoy the show. Oh, all right. You look so serious that Paimon thought you might be feeling uncomfortable or something. 40, 39, 38! Mr. Linny, are you all right in there? Is everything ready? Yes, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm just double-checking the direction of the magic. It would be a disaster if we get sent to the wrong places. For example, midair right above the audience. Even though he's saying that, Lenny doesn't seem nervous at all. I think it's all part of the show. Maybe he's just superly, supremely confident in his abilities. Ah, what was that noise? Did you hear it too? Did it come from the stage? Maybe it was just to divide our attention. Not sure. Anyway, it doesn't seem like anyone's worried about it. 25! 24! 23! What's wrong, Mr. Lenny? 
I can still hear you moving in there. I seem to have accidentally knocked over a decoration. I'm trying to fix it, but it's pitch black. Never mind the decorations. There's no time for that. The show is what's important. No, that's unacceptable. I want my show to be perfect. Don't worry, we still have 20 seconds. Hear them counting? 19, 18, 17. Uh, it seems things aren't quite going as planned. I apologize, everyone. It feels like you're all starting to count faster, but that's all right. I know it can be tiring to do such a long countdown. 10 seconds and change is still plenty of time. 10! Almost Another cutscene. Swapping two people is harder work than you might think. Even a master magician like me can't guarantee I'll get it right the first time. <laughs> hey, wait. Is this the back one? I can't tell. They both look the same inside. Huh? No, that's not it. I'll try again. Seven! Hey, slow down! Six, Honestly! Five! Four! Three! Uh, whoops! Two, that doesn't count! What is going on? Is she gonna come out? What the heck? What the hell? What happened to the girl? What happened? Oh no. Someone was inside! What just happened? What the f Oh my god, my welcome. Huh? Is this part of the show? Mr. Lenny, you're going to use magic to fix the stage now, right? What happened? Oh no. Maybe this isn't part of the show. The girl was still in that box, right? This performance is over. Medical staff with me. Guards, secure the scene and detain all the performers. Seal the exits. No one is allowed in or out at this... <laughs> Yes, that's right. If this was just an accident, then we must investigate the cause. But if this was all part of some scheme, then... Then those accountable will not escape the judgment of the God of Justice! No need to be alarmed, you two. We'll get to the bottom of this soon enough. What the actual heck happened here? I don't want to scare this... What is going on? What happened to the girl? Unfortunately, the person who is in the magic box has been pronounced dead. His name was Cowell, one of the assistants in Linny's magic troupe. Oh no. Apparently, the fireworks on stage ignited the ropes that were suspending the water tank, which then caused the tank to fall onto the stage. As of now, we are still not sure why we found Cowell in the box, rather than the guest from the audience. And after an initial search of the area, the guards have confirmed that the girl is nowhere to be found. It appears that this incident was not merely some mishap with the performance, and there are many indications that it is connected with the case of the serial disappearances of young women. Uh, the... the serial disappearances case? <gasps> That's the case that Charlotte mentioned before! To pull it off like this, in front of an audience including the Archon and Chief Justice... <laughs> I know... I know the truth. I can see through the whole thing. No, you don't. Really? Using such a shallow and obvious mystery as his finale. Did he really underestimate us that badly? I say that our powerful magician, Mr. Linny, is now the prime suspect for the serial disappearances case. Huh? Why me? This whole thing was an accident. No. This all occurred during your magic show, did it not? The missing girl disappeared after being chosen, did she not? The deceased is one of your assistants, is he not? Now that I think about it, that whole speech about magicians making things disappear was nothing more than a provocation, a bald-faced challenge. That can't be right. How can Lenny do this? He was in the box on the stage. 
waves the entire time. We can even hear his voice. Besides, before the show, he told us that he would like to catch the criminal behind the disappearances. He couldn't possibly mean catching himself. It's hard to believe all this happened during the show. Save discussion for a later time, please. Lady Farina, may I assume that your comments just now constitute an accusation against Mr. Liddy and his associates, and that you are pressing charges? Hmm. Huh. I just think that he... Well, I, uh, think... Wow. ...early to talk about formally pressing charges. But what Lady Farina said just now makes perfect sense. Looks like she's gonna personally deliver justice. Are you, are you serious? A kidnapping and murder carried out under the cover of a magic show. Lady Farina said it all. <laughs> uh, I mean, of course, my dear people. But what excites me even more than the obvious truth before our eyes is the opponent I'll be facing. That's right. I mean you, traveler. You'll support Linny, won't you? After <laughs> then, there's no problem at all. You know, this girl is trying to get on my nerve, honestly. The first time we met. But with Linny's help, our little duel ended in a draw. <laughs> but draws really are the most boring possible outcome. So, no more draws. Between the two of us, there must be a clear winner and loser. And... Huh. It wasn't a draw. She obviously lost last time. I understand. Charges have now been pressed. And as such, a trial is in order. Well, Traveler, seems Lady Farina has set you in her sights. But putting her dramatic rhetoric aside for a moment... I would like to ask you, are you willing to act as Mr. Linney's attorney and defend him in this case? Oh my god, we're actually gonna do this? Yes, I am. <laughs> Very well. The trial Objection! Will be a day from now in the Opera House. Both oh, wait. Sides may Is that how it works? I don't know. Their cases and search for the truth. Linney and his troop are all potential suspects and shall remain within the Opera House. The audience may begin to leave in an orderly fashion once they have been cleared by the guards. A day isn't that long. Let's see what kind of case this big shot outlander can build in such a short amount of time. <laughs> I'm really quite looking forward to hearing it. Everyone is dismissed and the audience begins to leave along with Farina and New Evelyn. New Evelyn. Sorry about everything that happened just now. Were you frightened? Of course! Yeah, I'm a little shaken up myself. <sighs> How could this happen? And poor Cal. I know you already claimed that you would defend me, but now it's just us talking. Tell me, do you think I could possibly be the murderer? No. Good to hear. Thank you so much for trusting me. I'm sure everyone sees me as the biggest suspect at this point. But if you ask me, the whole thing is mysteries layered upon mysteries. Such that all that's left is confusion. I don't know whether what happened there on the stage was purely an accident or not. And I don't know why poor Cal was in the box. As for how that girl chosen from the audience could suddenly disappear, I'm afraid I don't have any answers either. If someone tampered with my performance, then we need to figure out what they did. Even a skilled and knowledgeable magician like myself couldn't pull all that off in just one minute. Yes, it is very strange, but there's no denying what happened. Which is precisely why we need to investigate! As this book says, <clears throat> The impossible could not have happened. Whatever happened must have been that which is possible! What the heck? <laughs> when did you put that? Where did you get those classes? Oh my god, please keep it. Don't worry. Paimon used her own savings to buy them. It wasn't from our travel funds. I, I mean, I wouldn't mind. On you, Paimon. Yeah, yeah, keep it. Good taste, Lynette. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right attitude. Feeling depressed isn't going to help me now. 
I need to get back to my normal self, but with the guards watching our every move, it's going to be especially difficult for Lynette and I to prove our own innocence. Good thing you agreed to be our attorneys. <sighs> Thanks for that. We'll be counting on you. Yes, thank you so much. I won't let you down. I'm used to this sort of stuff. What do you mean? I, uh, yeah, the Samaru thing, we kind of did that, but this kind of chord thing? Well, we'll see. Since we're going to start investigating, Paimon has a question first. Where did Lynette go during the performance? Oh, uh, well, I'm afraid that would involve some of our essential trade secrets as magicians. The secrets behind our magic are past saving, Linny. I suppose you're right. The truth behind our tricks is going to be important evidence that will be weighted during the trial. <sighs> Tis truly a pity. As a magician, our magic show is a work of art. We've poured countless hours and spared no effort in perfecting it. But if revealing our secrets will help you uncover the truth behind what happened, then it will be well worth it. We should go somewhere else if we're going to discuss our magic tricks. We'll go speak with the guards, and in the meantime, you can go investigate the stage and the seating areas. Alright, let's go have a look while the investigation teams are still here. Detective Paimon is on the case! <laughs> wow. <laughs> What the hell? Wait, Navia? Huh? You mean us? That's right. If I'm not mistaken, you're also among those who wish to cut down the thorns and pursue the truth. No? And by the looks of it, you're not from Fontaine. Well, you're right on the more about that one, but who are you? <laughs> Have you never heard of the Spina di Rosula? Nope, never ring the bell. From mediating disputes and providing protection to solving conundrums, you name it, Spina di Rosula does it. And I, Navia, have the honor of being its renowned president. Though those who play by our rules call me boss. I'm Silver, her attendant. Pleased to meet you. And I'm Melus. Demoiselle's various daily needs and affairs are under my purview. Huh? Boss? Demoiselle? What gives with the names? <clears throat> well, I am the second generation president. Malus and the others are still used to my previous title. My apologies, Demoiselle. Should you prefer, boss, I will endeavor to use that instead. No, no need. You don't have to call me boss. Just Navia is fine. Okay, if you say so. Not that we're members of Spina di Rasula anyway. <laughs> All merely trifling details. Never mind. Now, back to the situation at hand. So you want to investigate as well? That's right. I've always kept an eye on the serial disappearance cases. My interest stems from a matter back from my father's time. Judging from the look of things, I find Linny an unlikely mastermind. Really? We think so too! That's why we're looking for clues now. But... How did you come to that conclusion? Intuition, naturally. My unparalleled intuition. <laughs> uh, okay. Farina sure was quick to point the finger at Linny without any decisive evidence whatsoever, wasn't she? But that's not uncommon for her. If you remember, the justice had to interrupt her and ask if she was pressing charges just to keep her from getting carried away. Anyway, a trial begins the moment someone levels charges. And, of course, there was no way Farina was going to back down in that situation. Sounds more like you just don't trust the Hydro Archon. Yep. What's your opinion? I must admit that she can be interesting at times. But liking her doesn't mean that I'll blindly agree with her. Well, when you put it like that... Alright, I've answered your question. Now, it's time you answer mine. Wait a minute, did that answer count? Well, I say it does. 
But don't worry. You won't hear any pointless questions from me. In your opinion, do you think it's right to treat a trial like it's an opera? No. Um, well... Not always. And why would that be? Doing so makes it easy for the truth to fall by the wayside. Something serious like trials shouldn't be treated like entertainment. <laughs> See, Silver and Malouse? I told you they'd be different. Most astute of you, demoiselle. I too think that the traveler's response was most excellent. No matter how wonderful the script or how fervent the audience's expectations may be, the trials that go on stage here must be based in fact. And if that can be done, boss, then... All right, that's quite enough, Malouse. Anyway, I like your answer. You pass with flying colors. Now, I need to make some preparations, following which our joint investigation shall commence. You two shall be my assistants. Already? But we're already attorneys for Line and Lynette. assistant sure or your companion if you like i'm really not that fussy <laughs> that's more like i think you're missing the point paimon seems you've already agreed then far be it from me to brag but i believe that demoiselle's intuition will be instrumental in uncovering the truth you wish to save a friend from false accusations and we wish to unravel the disappearances in this sense our goals are aligned you have a point. <laughs> You're quite the talker, aren't you, mister? And what about you over there? What do you think? You seem like you've got something on your mind. I have nothing to add. Okay. Oh, alrighty then. We'll be making some preparations first. Uh, just be sure to let us know if they start revealing Lenny's tricks. <laughs> Thanks. Wow. But let's take things step by step. Plan. Impossible things don't just happen. We'll get to the truth one way or another. Uh, just relax. Even if everyone else suspects Lenny and Lynette, at least we will be supporting them from the stand. Besides, I doubt Farina understands any more about what happened than we do. Thanks, Navia. Best of luck to you. I think it's time, guys. Ah, finally, you're back. Well, how did your investigation go? Uh... To be honest, you might be disappointed. No, no. We're already very grateful that you were willing to help. Huh? Well, now, don't you all look disappointed. Don't tell me that your investigation came up empty-handed. Shut up. That was to be expected, of course. The guilty can never produce proof of their innocence. But don't let that stop you. I shall be terribly disappointed should you, my most anticipated foe, concede so easily. I'm so tired, but just you wait. Since both parties are present, I declare that the trial regarding the magic show incident is now in session. Firstly, in order for the audience to understand the causes and results of the incident, could we please have Mr. Linney explain the trick? Yes, of course. I will explain while Lynette demonstrates on stage. All the necessary items have been prepared. Then he clearly reveals the details of the magic trick. Everyone in the audience Thank is you, done. Mr. In that case, I take your statement to be that you ran to and remained hidden within the magic box in the audience stands once the trick began, and thus could not have committed the crime. Is this correct? Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. In that case, I call upon the prosecution. Lady Farina, do you wish to refute his statement in any way? Why, of course I do. Allow me to take the first shot and break this case wide open. Mr. Lenny is clearly lying. There is no way you could have been in the box the whole time if you were to abduct Halsey and murder Cowell. In fact, I'd say you were hardly in that tunnel at all. 
What? What is that supposed to mean? That is simply your hypothesis based on the presumption that I'm guilty. Oh, is that so? And if I may ask, what did you hear while you were inside your box? The roaring countdown of the crowd, of course. That's how I kept track of the time and built anticipation for the finale. And you didn't hear anything else at all? Nothing that might leave an impression of any kind? No, nothing. I see. But when the count reached 30 seconds or so, there was a God thought. damn, this is actually so good. One so loud that I believe practically everyone heard it. Huh? Hey, hang on. Something's not right here. How could Lenny not know about that sound? Yeah, I'm sure he could have heard a noise that loud from inside the box. I was right by the box and I definitely heard the thud. Oh my god. Look at those scales. Could those mean... They probably represent the Oratress uh, stance on the trial. <laughs> well then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to use the words of the magician himself. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. Indeed, it seems his alibi can also collapse in the blink of an eye. <laughs> of course, I have armed myself to do far more than smash your alibi. Confidence cannot go unfounded, and my foundations are rock solid. Tell me, aren't you and Lynette actually from the House of the Hearth? House of the Hearth? They're for Tui? No wonder they did something like this. So the serial disappearances were the Fatui's doing. Now it all makes sense. It just appeared out of nowhere. How did this whole thing happen? Where is your evidence? I've got a feeling that what happened on stage probably wasn't just an accident. What's going That's on? That's irrelevant. Our identities have nothing to do with what happened. Indeed. Then perhaps you could tell us everything that happened during that one minute. Your first priority is to prove yourself innocent after all. I'm sure there is little that needs to be kept secret now. Unless your script already has holes in it. <sighs> the Outlander is speechless. My oh my, don't they look flat? What is going on? <laughs> Now comes the infighting in Discord, I suppose. This was almost too easy. Oh, good thing I made all those preparations. Seems the all-nighter I pulled last night is really paying off. Hey, Linny! Why didn't you tell us this before? Only in that are for two. Order! Order! Mr. Linny. Allow me to re-establish the facts. Lady Farina has raised two points. First, when the thud was heard in the Opera House, you were neither in the box nor the tunnel. Second, you and Ms. Lynette are both members of the House of the Hearth. Are these claims true? <sighs> There's no doubt about a magician's ability to con others, given how Lainey has concealed his identity. This could all have been set up beforehand. Plus, Child is here in Fontaine along with other house operatives. There must be a scheme at some at work here. I've been a victim of such schemes before and now. Please answer my question. They're, they're the victims. Please. What? I'm sorry. Yes, they're true, Your Honor. I knew it! Well, that's it. We might as well move on to the sentencing already. Let's wow! <laughs> Permission to speak, Your Honor. Granted. My client has withheld some key information. My defense cannot proceed. In that case, what is your request? I request a brief adjournment. There are things that must be discussed. Is that really necessary? They're already as good as guilty. The defendant deceived their own attorneys. What is there left to discuss? Order! Order, I say! Your request is reasonable, and we shall adjourn. This trial will reconvene in one hour. <laughs> So, you would stick to Mr. Lenny's defense even after knowing what you do now? You certainly have more professionalism than I thought. In that case, my dear audience, let's allow the joy of victory to steep for a little while longer. <laughs> oh my god. I don't have to use my brain for this. Come on.
While Cora and Jesus join you, meet with Lainey and Lynette backstage at the Opera Ale House. Well, this is awkward. I didn't think the Hydro Archon would dig all that up. I'm sorry, Traveler and Pipe. Yeah, sorry. Ugh. Hyman just knew where to start. We trusted you two. We based our entire reasoning on the assumption that you weren't bad guys. Not to set the wrong tone or anything, but Paimon's really mad! I'm very sorry. I know you're angry, and reasonably so, but please, let me explain. I know you've clashed with the Vatui several times before. I wouldn't be surprised if just hearing the word is enough to make you upset. But our organization is very, very large, and the Harbingers have very different personalities and goals. Right now, we want to save people. As many as we can. That's right. I'm sure we're on the same page when it comes to this nation and the disaster that its people might face. I'm, a, I'm honestly so shocked, by the way, but... I mean, we saw the story teaser. There was Arlecchino, uh, the Naive, and these two characters. I knew if it weren't for our respective identities, we could become good friends. That's why I didn't wish to flat out lie to you, but chose to hide some details instead. The truth is very important, but being completely transparent about everything would see us spending more effort than we need to. But how can we know this is all just another lie? Isn't all just another lie? Right. So, you be the judge. Heck, if I were you, I fear that I'd even struggle to trust me at this point. You met a Fatus who works as a magician, a trickster by trade. All by coincidence, too. But still, I'm asking you to trust me. I am no criminal. At least, not in this case. Sorry. Please forgive us. Well, you both say that, but... Explain the other issue first. Where did you actually go while the trick was being performed? Right. Let's hear your answer first. I... Of course. I'll answer any question you ask. We've been trying to find out how the Oratrice operates. We want to know why it has consciousness. Why can it deliver sentences accurately? During our investigations, we learned that the machine's core is beneath it. From that moment on, Lynette and I have been designing this box swap trick with the objective of getting close to the core. Is that why there's a vent? Is that why you needed a whole minute? That's right. In truth, the audience would take about 75 seconds to count down from 60, while I would only need 15 to get to the opposite box. So, after jumping into the tunnel, I accessed the Opera House basement via the vent, and went to investigate the room in which the core is stored. That air vent was created during the construction of the tunnel specifically to execute this step. And what did you find? Well, nothing. As soon as I reached that room and was about to investigate, I heard someone's voice. Which should have been impossible, of course. I was quite certain that I was the only one in the room. That voice seemed to recognize me and tried to speak to me. I chose to err on the side of caution and retreated the way I came. On the way back, I saw the broken vase and the clothes on the ground. But the countdown was almost finished, so there wasn't time to give it any thought. After that, the homicide occurred just as you saw. Well, that explains why you didn't hear the thud. Well, why do you want to understand how the uh, Oratrice operates? Because of that prophecy I told you about, of course. We must know all we can about this nation's secrets in order to deal with that prophesized crisis. That's the only way we can save everyone. So, there you have it. The whole truth. I swear, I didn't hide anything from you this time. It was never my wish to proceed under this cloud of mistrust either. But, like I said earlier, you can be the judge. If you want to leave because you don't trust the Fatui, there's nothing I can do to stop you. Well, Traveler, you decide. Paimon will follow your lead however you choose. I believe in the facts. I will defend you from these charges. I believe that judgment will be dispensed as it should. Okay, thank you. Thanks for giving us a chance. The current problem is that the scales are tipped pretty badly against you two. Yeah. If we want to refute the Hydro Archon's accusations, we're gonna need a seriously watertight defense! Actually, we only have a key evidence we need. Huh? The adjournment's almost over. Let's go back. Hmm. Oh, Paimon thinks she gets what you mean! Both parties have returned to their positions. Let us continue the trial. When last we left off, Mr. Linney acknowledged the new evidence presented by Lady Farina as fact. Therefore, Lady Farina may continue stating her reconstruction of the events. Oh my god. Ugh, that took long enough. 
Now then, if everyone would lend me their attention at this stage, let's revisit that scene from Linny's perspective. Based on the opposition's accounts of events, you can identify loopholes in their statement. Use evidence and clues obtained during the investigation to refute any errors assertions of fact and replace them with new inf inferences. Use your refutations, refutations to convince the audience and obtain more support from the people. The oratress will display such shifts clearly. When you find and refute all incorrect content, you can complete the cycle of refutation and unveil the truth. Oh my god. As the countdown began, he entered the tunnel. Yeah. When the flatbed trolley passed, he opened the box and got into an altercation with Halsey, which caused the loud thud. He did not realize that this sound could be heard by everyone in the opera house, which is why he claimed earlier that he could not hear the sound. Finally, he used the vase to knock her out before making her change clothes to prevent others from recognizing her. At this time, Cowell arrived in the tunnel, having heard that strange noise, and caught Linny red-handed. So Linny proceeded to knock him out too before stuffing him into that box. Afterward, Linny passed the unconscious Halsey to his accomplice through the magic box in the audience stands, before operating the devices such that Cowell's death would be ruled an accident. Wow. And there you have it. That's the truth behind what happened. Does the defendant's side have any objections to Lady Farina's description of the... The key to refuting Lady Farina is the order of events. What Linny experienced and what he saw. So what do we do with these? I mean, uh, line into the tunnel as the content began. So this is quite clear. We can do something about this one, though. Uh, claims that he had it and did not witness the crime taking place and thus did not hear the torn. He wasn't there, so could, could we use this? According to Linny, he left via the oh. vent after entering the tunnel. He couldn't have had that altercation with Halsey. Then uh, we could identify something like this. No, we go over here. So which one is this? Harvard was lining really in the tunnel at the time. Uh, the chamber that houses the Otris is to Hmm. Uh, I think this is one. Lin oh. went to the room that contains the Oratrice's core. This is the actual truth. Then over here, the existing evidence indicates that the, when Lainey returns to the tunnel, the crime had already taken place, and all Lainey saw was a uh, cowl. So, Lainey must have been very confused when he saw them. Why is it showing blue light? Do I use this? Lenny did not take part in the underground altercation. He only witnessed traces of the aftermath. Because the fact that there is a third person in our <laughs> place. Oh. Attention! Ace Detective Paimon has something to say! <laughs> Paimon! Nice, Paimon. <laughs> I mean, we kind of did the work. 
And now it's equal. A successful refutation. Wow. I didn't actually expect to do this. What? First try? God. He knew nothing of the incident. That's right. Moreover, I believe my opposition's reasoning is flawed. <laughs> my reasoning? The onstage equipment was clearly tempered within the primitive fashion. However, you say that Kawa bumped into Liney by chance. If that's the case, then if Kawa hadn't entered the tunnel, who was the entire setup meant to kill? Assuming that what you say is true. Linny only needed to kidnap the young girl to cause a new disappearance case. What would the point of killing someone on stage be? Oh, they have a point. <laughs> That's right, you tell them! <laughs> and this is actually the fun. Of mine. Man oh, well, your denial is very strident. I'll give you that. But what proof do you have to back your claims? Do you happen to remember how you refuted Linus alibi initially? <laughs> of course I do. If he had been in the magic box the whole time, how could he have not heard that sound? <laughs> You're saying that he wasn't. Your claim has now become my weapon. Your claim has become a critical coup. Nice. So, uh, wait. What am I supposed to do? And what? She's irrelevant. I'm actually very confused. What am I supposed to do? Which is the evidence that uh, Lainia wasn't in the tunnel when the crime took place? Relevant, 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 irrelevant, relevant. So like strange sound during the sound there was an audible thump that many audience that's right Lenny wasn't in the box or in the tunnel that's why he didn't hear anything strange during the performance this means that when the crime happened Lenny had already entered the basement via the vent. The same clue you used to disprove his alibi has now become the best proof! <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> Paimon, you're so you're so funny when you're explaining all these. <laughs> well played. Oh my god. <laughs> to think you'd use such logic. Ah, look at you! <laughs> committed the crimes then who was it hmm the murderer was select the gear icons in the interface uh, to check the corresponding case questions select answers to fill the empty gears to verify the correctness of your de deduction uh, if you made it you must make another selection from the remaining options Flanny is no longer under suspicion, and only the other member of the troop would have been able to tamper with the props. Flanny gave detailed account of how the trick was supposed to work by using a box inside a box. The idea was for the box containing the audience member to be transported across via a tunnel underneath, and Lani himself would also use this tunnel to get to the other side. Having changed her outfit, Lynette and her insistents would take the uh, would take charge on on stage interactions. The clothes belonging to Halsey, the lady who went missing, were found in the tunnel. The reason for this remains unknown. Hmm. Who was the only person who could possibly have committed the crime? The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. Halsey is the missing person and an ordinary audience member. 
Or did she have her own scheme all along? That wouldn't make sense, though. Could there have been a third person involved? Is that really a possibility? The deceased's name is Cowell. I think it's gonna be him. Oh, it is. My one? Are you serious? Maybe. Um, the killer was, in fact, Cowl, the deceased. Oh, is that so? How interesting. Let's hear your reasoning then. What I must do next is recreate the truth. What Cowl did, and how he went from would be perpetrator to victim. Linny was not in the tunnel at that moment, which gave our criminal ample time. The deceased's name is Cowell. Linny's... No one entered or left the opera house through its entrances. The sound we heard may have come from a clash between the missing Halsey and the criminal. It would have been tough for both people to fit into that vent. They would likely have bumped into Linny as well. Halsey's clothing was in the tunnel. The deceased's name is Cowell. I think I see how it is. Halsey's clothing was in the tunnel. I think Cowell is like the one who's working with the, you know, the disappearance of all these things. And she, he was trying to get the girl, but the girl managed to, you know, do something, you know, go against up against, uh, go up against him. And that would probably make sense after all. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I guess. No, oh, what? No. Oh. Wait, huh? It would have been tough for both people to fit into that vent. They would likely have bumped into Linny as well. What do you mean by that? No one entered or left the opera house through its entrances. So where would the criminal have wanted to take... No? Oh no. You can see how you die. Cowell had all the means to commit the crime at his disposal. Strange noise could likely most uh, have been uh, the sound of Cowell and Hasley struggling. Lanya was not in the tunnel for one minute. This would have been given time for Cowell to bring Halsey out of the magic box in the audience stands. But according to the uh, guard's testimony, no one entered or left the opera house. So even if he had taken her, she'd be no means of exiting. Exiting from box would have been in full view of audience, pretty much guaranteeing that they would have been discovered. What's wrong, Traveler? Are you still having trouble figuring things out? Where in the world did Halsey go? <laughs> I see how it is. So this was all just a bluff. And she, here she's I most likely inside the box. That's what I'm always thinking. It seems you're still far from the truth. She's most likely in the box because remember Liney said that there's two sides of the box? Like there's a wall between the box making two spaces inside. So maybe if the girl really took uh, Liney's uh, command so serious that she is not gonna come out no matter what happens. Look, since we're at a dead end, why not consider a different track? Oh, come on. Just like the trick as it transpired, the end result must have been utterly different from the magician's initial design. If only we knew how Halsey disappeared. Well, that would be nice, but the tunnel only has three exits, and none of them seem very likely. And it's not like this is a magic trick where you can just make a real live person disappear. You know, like you did from that water tank, Lynette. Magic. Escaping from the water tank. Wait, could it have been the water? <laughs> Excuse my interruption, dear opponents. But do you not see that the crowd is growing impatient? There is no greater sin in this opera house. Oh no. 
Oh, come on, I did so much. If the defense is unable to make further effective arguments, we will move on to the next stage of the trial. Hold on a second. What? <laughs> Minnie was not in the tunnel at that moment, which gave our criminal ample time. The sound we heard may have come from a clash between the missing Halsey and the criminal. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. Oh, wait. Oh, it's the this. This was not broken by chance. It was used to cover important evidence. The water. Wait. Please. Let's go. <laughs> it's actually the one. Don't tell me there's more. Oh, Paimon gets it! It all comes together if Halsey disappeared instead of being kidnapped! Lynette escaped from the water tank, vanishing gradually and leaving only clothes behind. If there's a similar method where a person could be transformed into water... <laughs> oh, just a moment, please. I do hope you know how preposterous you sound at the moment. Come on, let us cope, man. How could a person ever be transformed into water? This is reality we're talking about here, not some magic trick. I request that we examine Kawa's personal effects. We might find something there. Must we really? I should think that of anyone. Your friend Linny already knows this truth very well. Magic tricks are ultimately just illusions and misdirection. But Halsey's disappearance is very real. We're talking about two completely different things. Even so... I trust the Traveler's judgment. The truth must be out there somewhere. Perhaps a new line of reasoning may open if we try to gather all the focal points that don't make sense. Since Cal was the deceased, we haven't placed much attention on him. But given that we aren't making much progress with the case, it wouldn't hurt to have a look at his belongings, would it? <sighs> People really do come up with all sorts of harebrained schemes when at the end of their rope. The way I see it, your suggestion that we broaden the scope of our investigation is nothing but a tactic for stalling the trial. Nevertheless, I believe that this is a reasonable request on the part of an attorney. Since the trial does indeed appear to be at an impasse, I believe that additional evidence may help us make more progress. Guards, please step into the lounge and examine the personal effects of the deceased, Cowell. After some time, that guard returns with news. We are still examining the items, but we have already made critical progress that we feel must be shared with everyone post-haste. We discovered several test tubes of fluid within Cowell's baggage. Each the notebook in his backpack claims that these fluids are... water from the Primordial Sea. The Primordial Sea. The note's contents also indicate that Cowell belonged to an organization that sells illegal drugs and that he had an accomplice. The notebook has many entries concerning safe usage of these fluids, in which the keyword dissolve appears many times. One of these tubes was labeled Opera Epicles, along with yesterday's date. It is empty. The notes also state that these dissolution properties work exclusively on people from Fontaine. It's likely that Halsey was chosen as some sort of test subject. As such, we Are you kidding me? The defense's hypothesis is, in fact, supported by sufficient evidence you've got to be kidding people dissolving into water could something so ridiculous actually be true wait a moment this reminds me of a certain prophecy but it's just a coincidence isn't it huh if people can become water does that mean that the water tank's real use was as a means to hide water stains and if cowl was targeting that girl wait just a minute could that mean <sighs> You two, with me, quick! Demoiselle, wait! What is going on? Hello? Let's go. Just trust me. Order! Order! Oh my god. It is undeniable that further examination of the deceased's personal effects has yielded some surprising results. But we cannot yet verify the veracity of these clues. Still, let us assume that these clues are indeed authentic. Albeit with the understanding that Ms. Halsey has yet to be found. Guards, please continue examining the items along these lines. Mr. Linney, it appears your hypothesis is supported by the evidence. 
So please continue speaking. Of course. Thank you, Your Honor. If we uphold this hypothesis, I believe that many of this case's seemingly unrelated clues can be connected together. Right! Like the metal hook! That one didn't make sense at all! Oh, yeah. Let's think about this. Cowell's methods must have something to do with that water from the primordial sea. Water from the primordial sea. Okay. So it has to do with Cowell. Miss Cowell, Linny's a... Uh, seems like the hook. a hook that's there for no reason. Then, uh... The water from the primordial sea should already have been prepped. Maybe it's this? Now, which one of these three is gonna be? I remember there was something else within the inner layer of that box. There's like a hidden door beneath, uh, been behind it. Whatever I'm saying, talking about, but yeah, I think. Oh, hypothesis work. <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea, but I'm surprised I'm actually doing it. <laughs> it's Ace Detective Paimon's time to shine again. Ace, Ace, Ace Detective Paimon. Securing his target. When the magic box containing Halsey would lower, the metal hook would retract gradually and pierce the balloon at the top of the box. When the balloon attached to the box popped, the water from the primordial sea inside it would pour down and dissolve Halsey. Afterward, Cowl would enter the tunnel and break the flower vase to conceal the water inside the tunnel. But... He encountered something unexpected in the tunnel and wound up being fatally hit by the same water tank he meant to use to cover his tracks. Huh, that does make sense. That actually links together a lot of the more confusing pieces of evidence. Wow. Is that on our side? No? Balanced? Oh dear, what do I do? Even I think they sound convincing now. Have I falsely accused an innocent person? <sighs> what a humiliation. Now, it seems like the only point of contention remaining is the exact circumstances that led to Cal's death. His notes mentioned he had an accomplice who could be related to the situation. On that note, the guards have just contacted me indicating that they uncovered new evidence. I shall now invite him on stage to share it with us. On stage? Thank you, Your Honor. We were just inspecting the luggage of the other people involved in this case, and we found an identical sample of the water from the Primordial Sea among Linny's personal effects. What? What? That can't be. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, how wonderfully comedic to have what do you mean? a counter attack only to That's BS. wound you. <laughs> Does this not clear all doubt? My oh my god. Citizens, my loyal audience, allow me to present my reasoning and bring this performance to a swift close. Not again. Linny did not need to take part in the dissolution of the young woman at all. Indeed, he did leave the scene via the vent. Having made modifications to the props beforehand, his accomplice Cowell then caused Halsey to vanish using the water from the primordial sea. But upon his return, in cruel avarice, Linny desired sole credit and prepared to do away with his partner in crime. Ultimately, he knocked Cowell out, and the tool meant to cover the crime up also became a murder weapon. Oh my god, how did this make sense? Now, as much as I regret having come to such a viciously straightforward conclusion, it does seem that the famed Fatui is quite the cold-blooded and ruthless organization. Oh my Am god. I right, Mr. Linny? We've used up all the evidence we collected. There's no way for us to make a rebuttal here. Is this the end of the road? Oh, come on. What is that? It's just so unbalanced. We 
we've all seen enough now. And we have ample witnesses to my flawless reasoning. I believe this is indeed the finale. Oh my god, we're at, now what kind then, of stage is this? Good, noble Chief Justice. Should we not, in your view, move? Huh? Excuse me, everyone, but I must interject. Miss, I must ask you not to shout and to respect the ongoing legal proceedings. Oh, come on. Don't be hasty. I have a good reason for interrupting, you know. Now, would anyone here like to take a little break from all this debate and see a little magic? I'll show you an amazing trick. One that can bring a young woman who has disappeared back in the flesh right before your very eyes. Please, do the honors, Mr. Linney. If you would... What, what in the world is she saying? Wait, what? No offense, miss, but miracles like that are beyond my scope as a magician. Come on now, don't be silly. Magic is all about misdirection, isn't it? It often conceals the truth while presenting a fascinating illusion. But once everyone believes the illusion, can't magic reveal the truth to them once again? And wouldn't such a trick be the most marvelous finale to today's performance? Come on, Lenny and Lynette. Give it another go. Don't worry. Spina di Rasula has made the necessary arrangements on your behalf. But as a How did these two manage to get the box? Myself, I think I should leave the final performance to you. I understand. And voila. Tell me the ghost. She's inside. What? Um, uh, sorry for the interruption. Wait, isn't that Halsey? So the whole thing about people dissolving wasn't true after all? To be clear, I'm only here because this person told me that if I testified, the merit of doing so would lessen my sentence. I was hiding outside this room listening to the proceedings because I was afraid that I would be the one put on trial. Oh my god. I was just feeling happy that no one had noticed me. And then before I knew it, she caught me. <laughs> That'll teach you to underestimate us. Where should I begin? <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm the one who killed Cowl. I oh my god. But, what? Why? Firstly, my name isn't Halsey. It's Lillian. And I'm originally from Mondstadt. I heard that Linny's show was going to be a real thriller. But I missed the chance to buy a ticket, so I stole one. That's how I make a living. I steal stuff here and there. And I'd never been caught before. But I was noticed at the harbor a few days ago, and I barely got away. Lenny was the one who caught me in the act. Hey! No wonder you look familiar! So you- Oh yeah! Lenny even mentioned that you were pretty skilled! Well, and I thought that would have been the end of it, but then the number selector chose me. He even mentioned the Fortress of Meripede. That's a prison, isn't it? So you can imagine how shocked I was. I thought he was on to me for sure. So I played along with the show while looking for an opening to flee. But then I got water poured on me for no reason, and then someone jumped into the tunnel to nab me. I wasn't going to take that lying down, so I knocked him out and stuffed him into the box. There was nowhere to run from there, though, so I had to change my clothes and hide in a box containing performance costumes. I slipped out after the first guard arrived at the scene and continued hiding inside the opera house. Can a person even hide in there? If they're a practice at hand, the hand at concealment, probably a professional thief can make it work. But I swear, I what? didn't know that the water tank would fall down. Really, I swear it. Had I known that, I wouldn't have put him in the magic box. I may be a thief, but I'm no killer. Well, that makes everything pretty clear now, doesn't it? Now, it's time to refute the Hydrarchon's previous reasoning. Not this time. We need to tell the entire story from Lillian's perspective. All right. So which one do we do? Of course, you already entered the thing. Uh, is this all the evidence? The strange sound wasn't from a fight. It was Lillianne's attempt to break out when she was frightened. Oh. And this would be the broken face, but 
Lenny. Eliana was trying, I was struggling, you know. Uh, Koa, when she, he was trying to get Lilian, and then the struggling and all that happened broke down a vase. The vase was not broken to cover oh, wait, anything. she hit him with a vase. The struggle between Lilian and Kawa. So, I suppose this is going to be. Lilian was afraid that she would be recognized if she left, so she changed clothes and hid. Biding her time. Oh. And it's Ace Detective Time on Time! Wow. It's crazy. Having been selected oh, as makes sense again. Lillian panicked. Her panic only intensified after she entered the tunnel and had water poured on her head. Hearing the commotion, Cowl leapt into the tunnel, only to discover that Lillian had not dissolved. Because she's from Fontaine and no, she's from Mondstadt and not from Fontaine. She wasn't born with the sin, but therefore she couldn't dissolve in water. He did not know that Lillian was not from Fontaine, but was a thief who made her way in by stealing a ticket. Okay, Paimon, we know that. No need to say it's so aggressive. Mistakenly believing that the water from the primordial sea needed time to take effect, he tried to force Lillian back into the box. The two broke the flower vase during the struggle, but Lillian came out on top, knocking Cowl out and putting him in the box. Goddamn. With no way of escaping, she changed her clothes and hid in the costume trunk until the performance ended. Nice. And it's balanced. Successful refutation. This is so tiring, but it's fun. if she tried to leave afterward so she has been trapped in the opera house these last two days i can't imagine surviving two days without eating food she had already become desperately hungry by the time we were chatting over macarons so she swiped two of them right under our noses talk about a sneaky thief oh oh my god no wonder <laughs> and we put all the blame on paima because she ate we thought she ate two more of them Nice, by one. You did all the work and look. Now then, Lady Farina, do you wish to speak against the defense's statements? I... Uh, Please answer the question, Lady Farina. Also, if I may add, the trial has not yet ended. As such, I request that the prosecution not leave the room before the proceedings have concluded. <laughs> what? Are you reading my mind now? No. I have no further arguments. I admit defeat. But really, could you at least have left me with some dignity? Wow. Wow, we actually won. She's like a deflated balloon now. If there are no objections, then as the Chief Justice of Fontaine, I shall once again repeat the full sequence of events. The actual perpetrator of the serial disappearances, Cowell, selected his next victim from the audience reservation list. With some modifications to the selector, he could ensure that the pre-selected young woman would be chosen. To cover up any evidence while committing the deed, Cowell thought of allowing the water tank to fall, which would conceal the water left behind after the young woman was dissolved. He also tampered with the rope suspending the water tank, using the fireworks at the end of the performance to cause the tank to drop and hide the... He poured the water from the primordial sea into a balloon during the preparation of the magic box and stuck it to the box's lid. Ah! Finally, he passed the prepared hook on a rope through the gap in the magic box's door when bringing the young woman to said box. When the magic trick officially began, the box containing the woman was lowered into the tunnel, tightening the hook rope and bursting the balloon containing the water. If all had gone to plan, the young woman would be dissolved at this time. However, Lillianne was not from Fontaine, and thus fled the box with a loud noise. Yeah. Realizing that there was trouble, Cowell entered the tunnel and met Lillianne. Thinking that the waters had not yet taken effect, he decided to proceed. However, his opponent was more capable than he thought, 
and he was overcome, knocked unconscious, and placed into the magic box. Lillian, according to her own statements, then changed clothes and hid until the performance ended before hiding in other parts of the opera house. As for Linny, he was in the underground structures within the opera house and was thus ignorant of these happenings. From this reconstruction of events, we can conclude that Linny, the accused, is in fact innocent. Let's go! Amazing, Lynette! Amazing! While there is much in Linny and Lillian's conduct that should still be investigated separately, this case, at least, can be handed over to the Oratrice to make the final decision. Whoa, what is going on? What is this? <laughs> As such, Linny and Lynette are officially declared not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> that gave me the chills, not gonna lie. Great work, partners. That gave me a lot of chills. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Let's not celebrate just yet. What about Lillian? Next, I think we deserve an explanation, Guard Vaughn. How did you find the water from the Primordial Sea in Linny's baggage? Oh, yeah. He's but working with him. Your discovery caused me to make a serious mistake, you know. Or was that not a discovery, but false evidence that you dare to bring before this court? I suspect that the accomplice mentioned in Cowell's notes was not Linny. But you, yes? I... Uh... I'm sure you know what you must do to lessen your sentence. Speak quickly! Unless you want to earn yourself a one-way ticket to Coupon Town. I... I was just following orders. We were supposed to place blame for the serial disappearances onto Linny, and thus cause suspicion to fall on the Fatui. The higher-ups said this was the best opportunity to do so. And now that your plan has fallen through, and the secrets of the water have been revealed, you have become a liability to said higher-ups, yes? Therefore, you would be wise to tell everything you know and seek the protection of the guards. Yes, I'll tell you everything I know. Our boss discovered that the water can cause people to dissolve. It can also be made into a potion, which, when extremely diluted, can cause people to experience unforgettable exhilaration. We've been in this business for a while now and have made decent mora off it. The disappearances were also the boss's idea. I mean, this is the boss we're talking about. Well, oh, what what is going on? What? He dissolved. What the hell just happened? I can no longer talk. Such ruthlessness. I shouldn't have expected any less. An outrageous act. All present, please submit to inspection immediately. Oh no. Nothing is found. Two people died. What the hell? So, we're just going back now? Yeah, I think this is enough for us. The problem seems to have been solved for now. We're not needed here anymore. That's true, but. Traveler, Paimon, please wait. Winnie. I know you may not want to speak to me right now. Maybe you don't even want to look at me. But still, let me thank you again for defending me to the end. Even after you learned that I'm a member of the Fatui. I just didn't wish to see anyone be falsely accused. I just wanted to be sure that we were square. I guess. But regardless, I'd like the opportunity to set things straight. I didn't approach you with any ulterior motives or ill intent. I've spoken to you as myself, just plain Linny, this entire t As for why I'm a Fatus, it's because the goals of the House of the Hearth align with those of an orphan like me. That's all. That was how Father, who you might know as the Knave, approached recruiting us back then too. The knave? That's who you call the Father? What, huh? The Knave? The one who controls the House of the Hearth? She's your father? That's right. And since we're here, I was wondering, would you mind hearing a story? It's about my past. That's so weird. You call her your father. Back when our parents first died, Lynette and I were left wandering the streets. To survive, 
I took to surreptitiously observing an older street performer who did magic. It took me several days to figure out how he pulled off his amazing trick. I took my sister through several streets until we found a crowded corner, and we began to perform magic tricks there. To my surprise, we proved to be pretty popular, and we could at least stop worrying about where our next meal would come from for a time. But I didn't want my sister to remain a street rat together with me forever. Before long, an aristocrat came to me and claimed that he wished to take us in after watching my performances. So you went from orphans to nobility just like that? That was how we felt at first, too. As if fate was on our side and we could say goodbye to those painful days. But I gradually discovered that while we were called foster children, he was really after my talent for magic tricks. He would constantly take me to all sorts of banquets to garner attention, which he would then use to expand his social circles. That doesn't seem too bad either. Better than roaming the streets at any rate. <laughs> it took a while for me to realize just how dark his heart really was. After one particular performance at a banquet, I discovered that Lynette was not on the same return vehicle as me. I waited a long time after we returned home, but she did not come back. I went to that noble's bedroom and asked him about her whereabouts. The answer he gave me was, she caught the eye of the most eminent person at the banquet, so I sent her over as a gift. I mean, you'll be able to perform your magic regardless of who your assistant is, yes? Wow. Oh no. So he was gonna... <sighs> but what if Fontaine's laws deal with such... Oh my god, that is so... This is so screwed. As far as outsiders are concerned, this is a relationship akin to adoption or foster care. And they have their ways of escaping the eye of the law. Well, and so what happened after that? I managed to ferret out the location of the mansion of that so-called eminent person and hurried through the night. But by the time I leaped over the walls, avoided the guards and made my way in, all I saw was the moonlit ground covered in blood. And the knave standing there in the darkness. So... She'd already taken care of that guy. That's right. She had rescued my sister before she could come to any harm, and had even discovered several girls hidden in a basement, all of them orphans. Father, I mean, the knave, might have seen something in me, and so she made me an offer. The House of the Hearth welcomes you, for your interests align with ours. Here, none will ever betray you. Indeed. Betrayal shall never be permitted here. I was hesitant to trust her. I mean, I had just been betrayed by nobles. But she was also quick to destroy the noble who had taken us in at first, giving us back our freedom. Oh, so that's how the two of you joined the House of the Hearth. The knave is after the Gnosis, isn't she? She has her own plans. She has gained permission from the Sarita to first use the Gnosis' power when she obtains it. She plans to use it to find a way to break the prophecy and save Fontaine. Oh, wait, what? That's actually pretty nice. I didn't expect her to be like that. Like, she looks really cruel, but... The, the, learning how that she wants to help Fontaine? Damn, I... She believes in that prophecy too? That's right. The whole House of the Hearth is currently working to combat that crisis. Today's case has also proven that people from Fontaine can indeed dissolve into some sort of water, thus further supporting the prophecy. All of us House members here, Lady Arlecchino herself and Arlecchino from Fontaine, Arlecchino. we won't give up on defending our homeland. To us orphans, the only connection we have left to this world, apart from our family, is our homeland. So. From small deeds like distributing magic pockets to huge schemes like stealing a gnosis, everything is aimed at dealing with that prophecy. I'm sorry, but I still can't completely trust you. It's all right. I understand. The only thing I can do is relate all this to you. I just hope you can understand that even as a member of the house, I have never stopped making my own decisions, and that I believe what I'm doing is right. If you should need anything at all in the future, feel free to find me. I will do my best to help you, as plain Linny. I understand. Goodbye. Um, bye Linny! Uh, I think I should uh, stop right here, but...
Let's just exit the house and then... Yeah. Hey there! What was with the disappearing act you pulled right as the trial ended? Were you looking for us, Navia? Well, this whole thing isn't exactly over, is it? I do feel that we're getting closer to solving the serial disappearances case, though. Don't you think so, too? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Navia. Huh? What's wrong, my dear partner? I was really only trying to defend Liney. I wasn't necessarily looking into serial dis disappearance cases. Besides, are you sure we're the ones who can crack a case that's been cold for decades now? And given that there's new evidence from the trial, there should be a trail of breadcrumbs for the Hydro Archon's people to follow now. Ah, I see. Well, I won't lie. I'm a little shocked to hear that from you. But I suppose you are just travelers who have only arrived in Fontaine, after all. Sorry. I might have been too presumptuous. Uh, I feel bad right now. Don't say that, Navia. Ah, oh, and we were having so much fun investigating with you, too. Why'd you say it like that? It was like having new waters flowing into a stagnant mire, causing new hope to spring forth and the reflection in the murk to become clearer. Well, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm a bit prone to nostalgia. Don't mind me. Wait, shall we have a farewell meal? You know, to commemorate our time as partners? I mean, sure, I guess. Huh? Do we really need to get that formal? <laughs> uh, well, guess you really did treat us as partners, huh? Well, i just like to have a proper ending to every important memory. That way there are no regrets later. Anyway, it would just be a meal, so it shouldn't take up too much of your time. If you say so, let's go have that meal then. You don't have to twist my arm's arm. If Boss Navi is treating, can't play my name. Oh, wonderful. In that case, why don't we return to the Court of Fontaine and head to the Hotel de Boer? I believe we'll make it just in time for dinner. All right then, let's have our farewell meal. All right. Prelude to Blanche, well, 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 I don't know, I, don't, I, can't, I, just, I just can't pronounce these achievements, I'm sorry. But, yeah, I might have to end this video here, it's gonna... <laughs> it's, it's been three hours in this recording, and I, I probably think that the video is gonna be less than three hours. As far as I know. But, yeah, I'll see you guys uh, in the next uh, video, part two, Art Conquest, and yeah, bye-bye. Thank you.